Hello, hello. So we are live. Hello, welcome everybody. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, right. So how's everybody's week going? It is Thursday. Um, so we are heading into the weekend. Yay, we're heading into the weekend. Um, wanted to jump on and say hello. Hello, Carolyn. Thank you so much for joining um on instagram and anybody on facebook you are both welcome to hello to crazy cat like I, jay or adrian who's with me um so wanted to say hello and just do a quick q a post your comments post your questions anything you have um y'all have been awesome on thursdays posting tons and tons of questions um i have been busy learning so so much about so, so much. But um, specifically this week, I have been really like knee deep in learning lab values. Yes. So um, learning how to read, how to understand what all the lab values are, um, which is kind of brings me into like what my my little spiel is about today um i actually did a quick story time over on TikTok that i posted today if you haven't seen it i did i couldn't post it on um instagram it's in my stories but you can't see the whole thing because it's almost three minutes long so TikTok lets you do three minutes where instagram still only lets you do i think 90 seconds um so big difference right big big difference um it was a it was about using punishment physical punishment with dogs y'all i don't know how many people are still doing this like i'm not i i get it i'm not like so naive as to think that like nobody is doing this anymore um but like i i i, I felt like we were moving past this like there has there have to be like fewer and fewer and fewer people who really think that like they have to be in charge of and like the alpha and dominate their dog. Like, I, I don't know, we, we have surely moved past this for the most part, right? Like I need to know, I need to know like how, how many people out there know somebody who is like this? Like, where are we really like statistically speaking? But um, so back to the, lab values thing. So I, I, there's some really great information out there. You can certainly learn on your own. Um, I'm studying with Dr. Ruth Roberts and I also just finished a course that Dr. Judy Morgan has for, um, lab values simplified. So that's a really good one for like pet parents. If you just want to be able to understand like what, let me show you. So like this is um, a senior panel from one of my cats. So if you just want to be able to like understand what each line item means, right. Um, and then this is a urinalysis. Of course I have my notes on these. Um, <clears throat> but understanding like what you're looking at can, I mean, I don't know. It makes me feel better. I feel more confident as a pet parent, but actually being able to read these and deduce what could be going on with your pet um, leads me into something that I, look, I'm, I'm not perfect. I have never claimed to be perfect. I used to be that person, hello, I used to be that person that like, I just didn't always do blood work on my pets. It's an added expense um, and not, a cheap one, especially if you're doing senior panels. But here's the thing. It is really, really important that we do blood work regularly on our pets. Here's why. And even, I know what some of you are going to say, like, if my pet is healthy or I just have a puppy, they're healthy. Um, like, why? It is important then because when you start doing blood panels on your pets when they're healthy, when they're young, when they're healthy, then over their lifetime, your veterinarian 
or whoever you're working with can see trends happening and they can go back to when your pet was healthy and see, okay, the blood value here back, you know, three years ago, whatever it was, when they were super vibrant, young, thriving was this. And over the past three years, we have gradually seen this happen. So getting blood work done routinely for your pets isn't something that your vet just wants to do to make money. Like, no, this is something that these are data points that are in some ways even more important for your pets because they can't tell us how they feel. They can't tell us like they can, you can know that your pet isn't feeling great because they're acting a little off, but they can't say, oh, well, I have pain in my back right here, right? Like they can't tell you exactly what's going on. So to be able to have all of these data points throughout your pet's life can really make a huge difference in being able to correctly for your veterinarian to correctly diagnose what is going on with your pet. Now, even if you're working with someone who isn't a veterinarian, um, while they can't diagnose anything, they can still look at these trends and say, this looks a little off, this looks a little different, like this is suggesting that maybe X is happening, right? So really, really commonly, like, how is this like so common in cats kidney disease right and this becoming more common in dogs too um this is something that can be tracked because there are and what i have recently learned is there are measures on lab reports that you're not going to see changes until the liver has already what's yeah, let's say the liver has already been 65% or more compromised. So if you can start to, if you're, if you're consistently having these blood panels done for your pet, even way back when they are healthy and young, then your veterinarian can look at these trends and say, oh my goodness, we're starting to see like movement here, which and and every you know everything on the 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 blood chemistry report is showing you something different but they can say like um for instance like the alkaline phosphatase they are the like ALP is is what it's listed as on a let me find the blood blood report um they can say you know over the past 3 years this has slowly started to increase and that's not a good thing because that's showing a trend that the liver is slowly losing function potentially i'm not here to diagnose anything i'm just telling you <laughs> that it's so so important so normally you guys are like all over it on thursdays and instagram is super like active but it seems like y'all aren't super active today and that is okay. That is okay. You can come back and watch this video. I will be posting it or you'll be able to come back on Facebook and Instagram and watch the video. I will even try to post it to, I should be able to post it to YouTube. Last week's I didn't, I haven't had a chance um, to post it to YouTube, but I will try to get both of these up on YouTube just in case y'all prefer to watch longer videos there. You know, that's, that's me. Like I, I'm that person that's like quick, quick, quick on Facebook and Instagram, but then like when I have time, I can go to YouTube and like watch a longer video. But doing it live Q and A's are really, really great on Instagram, especially generally. So um, yeah, I hope everybody is doing great. Everybody's doing wonderful. I just, I'm gonna pull up my calendar here real quick because, so today is the 12th of January. Next week, next Thursday, um, I actually have a dentist appointment. So if I am able to do a Q and a, it will be later. It will be after three, um, probably closer to like four, 
or later. And I might even not be able to do it on Facebook. We'll see. It might just be Instagram just because of like location where I'm going to be. Um, but then 26th of February and the second, I'm sorry, the 26th of January and then the 2nd of February, um, I will not be here. So we will not be doing live Q and A's, but um, the week, so February 9th will certainly be um, our next live Q and A. Um, so just to kind of give you guys a little update, but um, you can still DM me if you have questions, comments, if you, if I post a reel, you know, like it, comment on it. I appreciate it. Um, just to help more people. Hennessy Garcia, your videos and podcasts help me so much. I want to be a trainer and maybe a nutritionist. Awesome, Hennessy. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that and do it. Like, do it. Um, and the two I have found overlap so much. That's why I have been talking so much about health um, and nutrition for our pets because even though I absolutely believe that we should spend time training with our dogs and to some degree our cats, um, if they're not getting good nutrition, they are not going to be feeling their best. They are not going to be behaving their best. Um, a lot of the like dry foods on the market, and I, I'm talking about like kibble products, high, high heat, um, heavily processed in the bag that says it's going to last on the shelf forever, right? That kind of thing. So not good. They are so full of carbs and starches. Um, they, the carbohydrate content is super, super high, at least 40%, some of them even higher. And think about what that does to your body. It's doing the same kind of thing to your pet's body. Um, so they are definitely not going to feel good. They're not going to act appropriately. They probably are going to have brain fog and not be making really great decisions because they're not like in the moment. Jonathan, hello. What's the best dog food for dogs over seven? Well, every dog is an individual. So I never want to give a blanket statement on what's going to be best for your dog. However, I always recommend a whole foods for our pets, fresh whole foods. Um, so it really depends on your dog, but feel free to message me, uh, DM me. We can certainly work with like whatever is going on with your dog, especially if they have, I mean, over seven, we're depending on the breed, we're approaching senior age, right? Um, and while I generally recommend raw food diets for dogs, um, as dogs get into their senior years, and again, this is completely individualized, some dogs will be great with a raw food diet their entire lives. Others, as they age, as they get older, and I, you know, a lot of dogs I'm seeing, and I'm saying, I'm not saying at seven years old, but like 12, 13, 14 years old, they start to like not want the raw as much. So lightly cooking um, would be an option for those dogs. But again, every dog is different and every pet parent circumstance is different. So if you're in a position where you would rather home cook for your dog, that's still going to be so much better than buying the bag of kibble off the grocery store shelf, right? So um, whole foods, fresh foods, balanced. Now, again, I know I've said this to you guys before. There's, you know, two camps, balance every single meal, or balance over time. And I think both are good ideas and either can be appropriate depending on your and your dog's situation and circumstance. Um, is there a list on what to put in a raw food diet? So to balance a raw food diet, um, there isn't a particular list. There are some really good recipes out there. Um, I would, off the top of my head, the best place for me to send you to, to get rest. These recipes will be every single bite your dog eats is completely balanced. Um, Planet Paws 
has recipes that are raw, balanced, very, very inexpensive. Um, I want to say like $3 for a recipe. The other thing I want to add to that is that we should always strive for our rotation. So we want to be rotating. For my dog, I not only rotate the proteins that she's eating. So like the past week, my dog has been eating beef. Today, I just pulled a different package out of the freezer, and that's venison. So not only am I rotating the proteins that my dog is eating, but I'm also rotating the brands that she's eating. So if you're one of those people that, like me, is buying commercially available raw foods, those are the certainly two things I recommend. So if you are going to be home cooking for your dog or making a DIY raw food for your dog, rotation is key um, because we're going to see different nutrient profiles, different uh, amino acid profiles from different proteins. And so keeping everything in rotation is going to help keep that balance in your pet. So I hope that can help. But if you still have questions, you can certainly DM me. I actually, um, let's see, if you want to home cook, I can help you with that. Um, I do have services for uh, helping you with home-cooked meals, um, raw food meals. Like I said, I think there are some really great ones out there. And certainly if, if your dog is like healthy adult, um, no issues, then I don't, you could certainly at least start with some of the planet pause recipes. If your dog is having um, issues, then again, uh, I, I do offer services for that as well. And we can, we can help uh, figure out what's going on with your dog. And well, I should rephrase that. Um, your veterinarian will diagnose what's going on with your dog. And then I can help you figure out the best ways to approach it, to heal your dog from the, the root cause instead of just masking symptoms. So um, with that, Y'all are, y'all, thank you so much. This is, this is so different because normally my Instagram is super active and Facebook is not. And today is so the opposite. That's, I mean, just to me, it's just interesting. So thank you so much um, for hanging out with me and being there to ask the questions. Another thing um, that Dr. Judy Morgan says is that when you get... So say you go into your veterinarian and you get a blood panel done, right? So like this is a senior blood panel. She says, no lab profile is complete without a urinalysis. So also get a urinalysis at the same time. Even if your pet is not experiencing any issues, why is this important? Because there are different measures on each that can give your veterinarian a more well-rounded picture of the data. So for instance, if they're seeing some things not so great, maybe in the liver and kidney on the blood panel, they can look to the urinalysis and see, okay, is there also protein in the urine? Because that is going to like just hammer at home that yeah, there's, there's an issue there. Um, so make sure when you are getting your blood work done for your pets that you're also getting a urinalysis done so your veterinarian can have a full picture of what's going on. I will look into Planet Pause. Yes. So Planet Pause, if you haven't heard of that before, that's um, a, off the top of my, I'm going to say, I think it's a nonprofit um, that Rodney Habib started a long time ago. He is, um, in, I'm going to say partnership because they wrote a book together with uh, Dr. Karen Becker. And so all of the money, even though these recipes that they offer are like super inexpensive, I want to say they're like $3 a piece. Um, all of whatever, all of that money just goes into the nonprofit. Um, and then I believe Dr. Karen Becker is the one who balanced and created all of the recipes. So you can feel confident that you're feeding your pet the best nutrition. Again, for a healthy adult dog, if your dog has any um, issues, any like say they're, you know, you're, you're, they're overweight, 
that's certainly an issue we want to deal with obesity, though. Switching from a kibble to um, a whole food or raw food diet can certainly help, um, but that's an issue. Um, if, they're, if their kidney values are off, if their liver values are off, or if they have any other physical um, ailment, or even mental, like if they have anxiety, um, we certainly want to deal with that also in the diet. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys for being here. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend coming up. Um, I hope you get some rest and relaxation and also some fun in to your weekend. And uh, yeah, again, if you have any further questions, I if I'm not available, because I don't know about next week um, because I have a dentist appointment, but certainly the two weeks after that, I will not be here to do Q&As. So you can certainly reach out to me through um, through, mess through the messages and I will see what I can do to help you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say bye. Please give your pets some extra love for me. Also, if you have not um, caught up on the podcast, I almost ended today and didn't say anything about it. I don't know what's going on with me. If you haven't caught up on the podcast, it is called the Pet Parenting Reset, just like the name of the page you are on right now. So go to your podcast app and make sure you um, get caught up. Weekends are a great time to do that um, because you can listen to podcasts while you're doing other things. That's what I do. Um, it's really, really great. I think uh, Dr. Josie Bube was on the very first podcast episode of the year um, for the Pet Parenting Reset. That is definitely an episode you will not want to miss. And I know I posted about it um, when the episode went live. We're only in January, but I think this could be the most important episode of the entire year. So definitely go back and check that one out if you haven't heard that one. Um, who else? Oh, I've got some really, really great guests coming up on the podcast. And also, I think the 18th. The, I, I, I want to say the 18th. Let me double check for you guys. So I don't tell you the wrong thing. Um, for, oh, nope, wrong one. For pet health junkies. Yeah, January 18th is the next um, release for the pet health junkies podcast. That one is going to be about how much, how much should I feed my dog or cat? That was an interesting conversation. So uh, check that out. Check them both out. But uh, Dr. Josie Bube on the Pet Parenting Reset, that one, you guys, I definitely, like, hands down, without a doubt, I feel like is going to be, I haven't even recorded all the, obviously, we're in January, I haven't recorded all the episodes for the year, but that is going to be one to not miss. So uh, with that, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. Give your pets some extra love from me, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.